Hello and welcome to Car Loop TV. We're back in the Mega Dodo garage with Malcolm. Regular viewers will no doubt remember I have been having some limp home mode issues with the M3. Link to the diagnostics video at the top of the screen. We utilised Carly to initially fault find and as you can see here it does actually mention the exact fault. Then with a bit of research on M3 cutters and finding others had had the same or similar issues with their cars, the wealth of knowledge on this site is astounding by the way, so we were 99% sure we found the fix. There is always an element of guesswork with intermittent faults, but this is the part we've identified and will be changing today. It is a brake booster sensor with vacuum pipe. It was about £140 from my local BMW dealership, and the sensor and the vacuum pipe can't be bought separately. The sensor is buried underneath the brake master cylinder, and there is definitely a knack to getting it out and obviously reinstalling it. In this video, we will do our very best to show you the easy way to carry out the task, not that it was easy but you understand. As you can see, Malcolm has started removing the cowling to expose the brake master cylinder. If you like this video or found it at all helpful, please give it a thumbs up, browse the channel and consider subscribing. And if you have any questions regarding the install, feel free to comment below. Pump the brake a few times. So we've got this little plastic housing here and then there's a little clip here which is that white bit there that should allow us to separate the vacuum pipe here okay so that's that out so you pump the brake to, to release, to release the, vacuum. the vacuum yeah otherwise you just can't get those parts apart okay wouldn't be like a big explosion then. no it'd be just better bit of a pop but it actually makes the job a lot harder so that just hopefully gives me a bit more access down there to be able to pop that off so this is curling back like that so we've just unclipped that bit yeah I want to try and get this popped out of the servo and see if I've got room to maneuver it around and out hopefully there's enough slack on the cable to get it to a position where I can get the cable off, although I might be able to do that by hand, but I'll need to pop it off here to give me a bit more flexibility. So there's a little tag on there you squeeze on most of these connectors to allow you to unhook them. So this is the pressure sensor on the tube. Some people just change this by undoing those two screws. Um, I'm slightly uncomfortable about that due to the lack of access down there. But also BMW only sell it as a, as a part like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that part was about £140. Right. Can you believe it? I, I can. <laughs> <laughs> into position I don't think that it will come out unless I get that through there will that then turn It was about this time Malcolm realised there was no way to get the vacuum pipe off without making more space by removing the four bolts that hold the brake master cylinder in place. But one of the bolts at the bottom proved very difficult to get onto, so we then tried loosening the bolts on the ABS module. Has that given you anything whatsoever? Well, I, I don't know whether it will give me any better access to the nut that's on the master cylinder. I'm still not convinced I'm doing this will give me enough room onto that nut. There's just no room. <laughs> Master cylinder is now. There we 
we go. That's the way to do it. So after faffing around a little bit, what did you do to so get So after that faffing out? around, I've managed to get that one off. That bolt down That there. bolt down there. Yeah, on the bottom of the master cylinder. On the bottom of the master cylinder, I managed to get that nut off. That then allows, because you've got two flexible pipes on the master cylinder feeds, you can actually pull that out quite a bit and that just gives you that extra bit of room to get that in. And there's no sign of any damage to the pipe, but there could be, you know, potentially a leak there. I doubt it, potentially leak there, but if there's something wrong with this sensor or the seal on the sensor. So we're not getting the the, the um, symptoms of a leak anyway, are we? We're no, we're not. The symptoms of a intermittent fault. Yeah, which um, is which is sensor-esque in its nature. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, one of the things is with with a, with a fault like this, the only way to be sure it's not the sensor is to change the sensor. Yes. There's no measurements we can make on the sensor, especially when it's out of the car, to tell us whether it's good or bad, unless it's really faulty. Right. In which case, I suspect your fault wouldn't be intermittent as it is. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure... I mean, on the way here today, absolutely fine. Yeah. So Started up, didn't go into limp mode, absolutely fine. And the, the thing is, we've been fiddling with that last time, haven't we? Yeah. We've been actually... Well, I'd been actually pulling on wires and stuff, so any one of those might have made a reconnection and that's lost the intermittency, we just don't know. But the safest no. thing to do is to change the sensor, which is... So what we're going to do is that, we're going to have a look at it? Yeah. We spent an obscene amount of money on a new sensor, so we're going to fix it. Well, I wouldn't have thought that would be the problem, because it's nice and clean. You can see there's dirt on top yeah. of the seal, but nothing down below. But the degradation in the seal? Can you get a more consistent error, I would have thought? Mm. But yeah. So we're just using some it's red. red rubber grease, but you could use silicon lubricant and it's just easy tin. Wipe off any excess and we can maneuver this back into position. Okay, so we need to get this back in. relatively easy now we've managed to move the master sender slightly. Yes, it, it's the width, it's the sensor width that's been the issue. Right, now here comes the fun bit, it's getting the wire back on. Yeah, wires on. So if that goes back into there, that's it. I need to be able to push that. So I've got to get the end of the pipe back into the servo chamber. What's now? So the, the pipe is... The pipe is in location, the wire is on the sensor, that will connect back up to there when we're done. Yeah, that's still going to reach, so the tr challenge now is getting those nuts oh, yeah. back on the master cylinder, top on, dead easy, he says. That's it, so tighten those three up. So ultimately to get the access that we had, we had to remove the uh, the bolts on the ABS No, I, sus I suspect module. not, it no. Didn't it need didn't that. need that, no. no. I thought that might give us enough room to get the, the sensor out this side, but the, what, it didn't help at all. But and it didn't help access to that bolt either, which was another reason for moving that. But definitely that plug being moved out of the way. Um, that you've got the big scarf. Probably not actually, no, no. That's probably not required to come out next time, no, because that, the, the limiting factor for this will always be this yeah. against here. Yeah. But it's moving it forward, just widen that gap off enough to get the sensor out. Yeah. So I think next time, just those two bolts, top and bottom, slide that out and then it'll just peel out. Okay. And just worth noting the, the access to that one down the bottom there is... Is a pain. <laughs> I was wondering if that... With a, with a different set of... a different ratchet spanner, I might have been able to do that one, get that one off more easily. Um, but there's still a challenge of getting it in there without it dropping off. And I think the other one has just dropped off. No. One of the problems I have with the camera is understanding its relationship to me. 
they're nearly there but as you can see I can't get to it okay <laughs> that's very cool The reason we did the sensor, uh, when it could have been the pump and it could have been a, a leak, it could have been a relay, but the reason you do a, a, a sensor is because it was an intermittent fault. Intermittent fault, yes. And all the, all the Carly um, data was mentioning that it was a vacuum. It was implying that the vacuum wasn't right and the values that we were getting off the sensor weren't consistent with the sensor being faulty and it being a leak. No. Uh, they were they were way out of range i.e there was one point there was no reading off the sensor whatsoever yeah if there was a vacuum leak i would expect there to be some reading and there, yeah. there wasn't so that's yeah. probably not the way that the, that sensor would fail yeah so and, and, and intermittently we mean by by way of every now and then it would do it yeah when i start the car the car would go into limp mode i have to, I have to mess around with the car lead to turn off the limp mode so i could drive the car um if it was a pump it wouldn't be intermittent, would it? It'd be far more consistent as a fault. Yeah. And actually, you might get things like a heavy brake pedal. Yeah. Because the pump wasn't operating. Yeah. Um, you'd find that it wouldn't provide enough pressure. It would be running with enough vacuum, and it would be running more often than it should be. And you'd get errors around that on Carly. Yeah. So there'd be more saying more towards the pump end of it. Of course, there's no absolutely no guarantee. That's the problem with these sensors, which are dependent on loads of other systems working properly. And uh, also there was mention of a fuse. Again, that's a fuse that maybe the pump might have caused because there's a problem with the pump. Yeah, but I think a fuse they were referring to was the actual supply for the pump yeah. itself, in which case, again, heavy brake pedal would be the likely yeah. result of that pump. So I never had any brake, heavy brake or soft no. brake feeling. It just literally would start up in... And, and, the, and the cold start cycle wouldn't work. Yeah. And then we knew it was in limp mode. Yes. Yeah. And I suspect it wouldn't allow the cold start cycle to run. Um, because it thought there was a problem with the vacuum. Quite why it makes that relationship, I don't know. Um, but if it's not getting any brake pressure, then maybe you, it actually makes sense. If you've got no brake pressure, then it's gonna be harder to brake. Why would you want to be driving at full tilt? Yeah. Actually backing off in the engine is a sensible solution for the programmers to do that. Yeah. So you can't yeah. use full power. So now we just need to, I suppose, switch him on. Switch him on and, and see if there's any sort of errors. <laughs> That's the problem with an intermittent fault though. The light could be back, we just don't know. The only way you're going to find out, James, is to run it for a few days and see if you can solve the problem. Will it be building vacuum now? Yes, it will have built vacuum now, yeah. yeah. It'll very quickly build vacuum. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, that's fine. Pedal feels good. Pedal feels fine, yeah. Okay. What you'll, get, you'll get no virtually, when there's no vacuum, you'll get actually no movement and it'll be really hard to push, but yeah. that's nice and easy to push. Yeah, okay, good. Job done. If you liked this video or found it at all helpful, browse the channel and consider subscribing. The BMW E60 M5 and the Lamborghini Gallardo, although being completely different cars in their own rights, both share 5 litre V10 power plants. I have the uh, Carly adapter which I'm going to have a look at some hidden options, see if we can give it a little health check and also look at some customisation, see if there's any options we can switch on.